Hello everybody, my name is Wisdom Hunter, and I like to play D&D. It is fun to play D&D with friends and other people, but sometimes you have to play D&D and RPG games, role-playing games, by yourself. That's called solo RPG. So I'm going to set up a series of videos, I just decided this like two minutes ago, to do a series of videos on how to do solo RPG on Roll20. And here are some of the topics that I'll cover. You first got to know your world. I'm going to be covering that in this video. Then you got to know the people and the creatures that live in that world. You got to know the how to create characters for the people in that world. And then how to create stories. And then I'm going to be showing you how to use an advanced oracle to decide what's going on in the story. Because when you're doing solo RPG, you have to be your own game master. Basically, oracles are when you ask a yes, no question, and it gives you an answer. But I'm going to give you an advanced oracle that really helps you develop how to answer yes or no questions. I'll get to that later. Then I'll show you how to run the story using Roll20 for solo play. And along the way, I'm going to be showing you examples. So the first thing you got to do is know your world. So I'm going to show you the world that I use. So here you're looking at half of the world that I use. This comes directly from the Robert E. Howard Conan books for the Hyborian Age. And you'll see this is the whole world that the Conan books presented. Now you can go through the Conan books and even the Conan role-playing books. There's a first edition, second edition, and third edition. And you can go through these editions of books and there is lots of books and information fleshing out this world, the cultures and the people and the, and the geography and the history. Tons of books. But this is really only half of the world. Let me show you the other half. So this is the other half of the world that would be on the other side of the globe. And I really like this map because it has plains and deserts and mountains and a lot of water. Whereas if you go back to the first map, there isn't a lot of water travel between places. Unless you're going along the coast. Otherwise, it's all land travel. But when you come into this world, there's a lot of water travel to take you from place to place. And this, to me, this is a really interesting map. But it's not fleshed out. I just found this map on the internet somewhere. I have no idea what's really going on, but I'm going to develop this whole map to bring out the Americas and other parts of the world that are not presented by that first map. If you look at this map, you'll see kind of Europe up in here and Africa and the Middle East, over to India and over to China. You come over to here and now I'm going to flesh out this part to represent history in different cultures around the world. So let me show you how I do that. I've labeled the different areas to the kinds of cultures that I want to bring out. Like over here to the left, you'll see the Mayan and Aztec cultures through there. So it'll be like a rainforest, volcanoes, and that whole history. And there's lots of magic and mystery and technology and science and mathematics and astrology in those cultures. And then down below you see the Incans with their gold. And then up here above that you'll see Rocky Mountains and the Great Plains of North America. There's about maybe buffalo running up and down those plains right there. And then I made a little area down here for the homeland of the dragons. There was a mountain range across here called the Dragon Spine. So I just said, okay, that's going to be where the dragons live. That's where they live up in the mountains. And they go down and feed on the plains on animals. And so that's where the dragons live. Mostly, they've been pushed to that corner of the world, but they can fly around the world as they need to. But there's going to be a huge population of dragons in those areas. So here you begin to see this whole world beginning to flesh out. So wherever I want to go, whatever type of story I want to create, I have a world. And I can begin to get a sense of who lives there. The animals, buffalo, dragons, deer, antelope, whatever. So I get in the sense of who lives in that area and the cultures, the technology, how they dress, how they explore the world. So now the question comes, why do you need to spend so much time getting a sense of the world? And the answer is, is you need to know who lives there, what sort of treasures are there, how people are going to be traveling across that land, how do they live? Because you're going to be picking a certain place within this world, seeing how those people live, the nature around them, the weather patterns, the soil, the food, the music. You're going to be going into a certain part of that world and developing a story. 
So this is why it's important to get a sense of your world. Because you want to know, where do I want to tell a story? Where do I want to go? It's not just so easy that you build a town, put in a tavern, and have people gather in that tavern. Now, in my case, I wanted a world that covered everything on this earth. I wanted a world that covered all of the cultures, all of the countries, all of the histories, all of the people of this earth and their stories and how they come together and how they share mysteries and treasures, conflicts, war, peace, development, sharing. I wanted to get that whole story in my world because now I pick a place and I'll tell a story. So the first of doing a solo RPG is just looking at your maps. Just sitting here looking at the maps, looking at the mountain ranges, the rivers, the coasts, looking at the landforms, getting a sense of the people who might be living there and the animals and how they're hunting and eating and all these different things and the animals in the ocean and maybe tsunamis, earthquakes, tornadoes, dust devils. Where do floods happen? You can just look at this world and, and sort of meditate on it for a while and get a sense of its seasons, of how it changes. So this is the key to really get a sense of your world because this is where people are going to be living and this is where your stories are going to be told. And the more you know about the world, the more you can feel the world, the more interesting stories you can actually tell. So now just to show you a little bit of Road 20, I have these maps in Road 20 too. And this is the one map of the Hyborian Age where Conan lived. And then I come up here, have the other map of the other side of the world. And then over here, I have this other map that I use for reference to see what types of cultures live around this second half of the world. And then just to show you over here onto the right are the macros that I'm going to be using. I have city macros, so every time, anytime I need to build a city, I can build that. And I'll show you a little bit about how the Oracle might work as far as building a place in the world. So I have an oracle over here, you'll see it right there. So let's say, let's say that you're in this area and you wanna come over here to this Akani desert, this desert in the Akani continent right here. And let's say there's a little area over here to the coast and you wanna know a little bit about it, but you, all you see is an area on the map, but you wanna develop a story about that. So what I do, is I ask the Oracle. So I'm first going to come up here. I'm going to write a question and say, so here, I've just written a question. I'm going to say, is this place evil? So I just want to ask any yes or no question. So I'll put that in there. Is this place evil? So then I'm going to ask the Oracle. Come down here, push the Oracle button. And it's going to say yes or no. And I'm going to say probably no. It's more no. Because mo most places in the world are not evil. Most places in the world are good. So let's just say that. So I'm going to say no. If the answer of the oracle comes back yes, I want to give a certain chance to change that to no. So I'm going to give it a DC. I'll just give it a DC of 4. So if it turns out yes, but I can beat that DC of 4 with a roll in roll 20, I'll change it to no and make it good. So here. It came out, yes. The Oracle answer, yes. If sometimes or sometimes, so you can see this is how the Oracle answer is going to go. It gives you a yes or no, but then it starts to qualify that. And it says, if sometimes or sometime. Now, to change this to no, I rolled a five to beat the DC four. So I can change that to no and say, no, this place is not evil. And then I have four words down here. I have not a list of 900 words that I can randomly choose from. And I, cho I random, so I randomly choose four words from that list of 900. And I use those four words to develop a story for that area. So here we have this little area in the desert of the Akani coast. And I have the words confiscate, subconscious, demand, and a wish. So by using those four words, I develop a story for that little area on the coast of the Akani continent. So give me a second, I'll be back with a story. So the story I could tell about this little, little area, I'll ping it here, this little area right there on the, the Akani coast. When I put together the words confiscate, subconscious, demand, and wish, I don't see people living there, but I see that there's this legend of people nearby 
that say there is something there that can be taken. And there's this demand, there's this wish for something there. And what is that something? Can ask the oracle again. So what is, what may be the treasure or something there that people demand or wish for? I can't just say what is there. I need to ask a yes, no question. So I'll say, so I will ask, is there treasure? And ask the oracle once again. And I don't know, yes or no, I really don't know. I'll just let the oracle say, so I don't know what, neither yes nor no. So give a high DC so it doesn't matter. So no, there is no treasure there ever since somebody, ever since somebody did what? Tease, avert, kiss, vacant. So there was something there. People lived there and then vacated the area that you can see by that word vacant. So there was this tease, there was this kiss. There was this idea that someone saw something there that was that was very interesting and they got very close that they could almost taste it and kiss it. They were so close to it, but something averted them away. But they felt like something was still there. So there's this mystery right there. Maybe sirens live there uh, uh, and harpies. And there are creatures there that are calling to try and draw sailors into their death. Maybe this is what it is with a tease and a kiss. Maybe that's where harpies and sirens live to try and draw sailors to their death. So as you can see, the oracle can give you some ideas to start developing the tiniest places in the world. And it just takes a couple of questions. And in this example, with eight random words, I was able to develop an idea of what was in that area. So now I could just say, along that coast, there are sirens that as the sailors, so that as the sailors sail by, they hear the beautiful songs to draw them in. But really, it's a trap. That could be just part of the story. So I think that's enough to start this. This is Wisdom Hunter signing out. And remember, whoever enjoys the game the most wins.